Welcome back to the very unofficial travel guides. I'm Morgan and today I'm going to take you to Wonderland. Where guests tumble into a culinary adventure when they set foot inside the striking two-story restaurant. Wonderland. It's a must-try sensory experience and serves whimsical meals that will delight and inspire from beginning. And yes, I just read that off the Royal Caribbean website because I wasn't feeling creative today, so that's what you get. I went to Wonderland on my cruise on the Harmony of the Seas, which was a little bit older, a little over a year ago now. It was such a big moment for me that I, it doesn't feel like it's that long ago, but so much has happened since then. It was November of 2000. 16 and now it's 2018 so geez that was a while ago. Let's look at the restaurant. Uh, first of all I have to say special thanks to Miss Marzipan on Instagram for hooking me up with the invitation. People if you are into fantastic uh, healthy food especially vegan food check out Miss Marzipan on Instagram right now. No wait do it at the end of this video. I'll remind you again. If you're a foodie, you won't regret it. So the whole concept of Wonderland, in my opinion, is uh, to bring the average cruiser kind of out of their comfort zone and supply them with an extremely memorable night, which definitely happened while we were there. The presentation of the food is really crazy and spectacular, but in my opinion, and I'll talk more about this uh, as the video goes on, in my opinion, the taste, the flavor was really just kind of meh. The magical experience begins when you are delivered a blank picture frame and asked to paint any object in the frame which reveals the food menu below. It's a neat gimmick and I could imagine that kids would really like it, but I don't think kids would like the food here. The cocktail menu is also something special because it glows when you open it up and I really thought that was cool. We were served a few different things to try from all the six different categories on the menu, including these buffalo chicken eggs. Ooh, smoky. Crispy crab cones filled with cilantro, avocado mousse, and oba leaf. They made a crab-free version for us as well, and I thought they were just okay. I much preferred the nachos and guacamole down at Sabor a couple nights earlier. Then we also had some tomato water with pepper spherification and bread foam, which is like a weird twist on tomato soup with croutons, I guess. This doesn't look like food, and there's like this weird instinct that kicks in that tells you that you shouldn't be putting this in your mouth. And then you do. Yeah, and then you do. Mm. It tastes like sort of a smoky tomato soup. This is the baby vegetables in the garden with a vegetarian version and the non-vegetarian version, which has something to do with the soil. I think it had squid ink in it, and that's why they considered it non-vegetarian. Visually very stunning. Taste-wise, it was unfortunately kind of boring. It was like raw vegetables. This here is the terroir beef with a river stone potato and bordelais sauce. No idea what that tasted like. And this was my vegetarian entree, and I'm really sorry, but I don't remember what it was. I think it was some kind of rice, and that's a falafel on top, maybe. It wasn't on the official menu, so I couldn't look it up. And yeah, it was also kind of forgettable in flavor, so that was that. Now we get to the desserts, which were, of course, also visually spectacular and perhaps the most flavorful part of the dinner, if you ask me. This is the world, which is listed as a peanut butter ganache, Valrona chocolate mousse, and salted caramel ice cream. And yeah, I mean, we've seen this melting sphere trick at Monsieur Paul's in Epcot and on a lot of fancy schmancy cooking shows, but still, it was also very rich and tasty. This is the Dream Sunday with black currant sorbet, Tahitian vanilla gelato, and marshmallow, and we also had the Forbidden Apple with raspberry cremo, whatever that is, brown butter crumble, and on the menu it's also listed as yogurt ice cream, but isn't that just frozen yogurt? All in all, I'm glad that I got the invitation from Miss Marzipan on Instagram, remember to check her out, because uh, I think uh, I probably won't probably won't go there again. I'm not saying that I don't think you should go there, but I now that I've done it and now that I know that what the food is like, I I guess I just don't I feel like I don't need to do it again. It wasn't that spectacular or that magical. There was no, you know, like mystery. Nothing happened where I thought, "Oh, geez, I really need to see how they did that again or I really need to taste that again." Uh 
that makes me like or really want to do it again, especially if I have to pay for it. But like I said, that doesn't mean that I don't think you should do it, especially if you're looking for like a very romantic night or if you do any kind of social media, the pictures and the, the footage that you can get from A Night in Wonderland is just you know, fantastic. A lot of possibilities for content there. If this is the first of my videos you're watching, then uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I've got a lot of videos like this on my channel of restaurant reviews, not only from cruise ships, but also from theme parks and sometimes um, other things as well. So uh, please subscribe to me here and press the little bell button next to the subscription. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to give me a little extra support, uh, do that at patreon.com slash very unofficial special thanks as always for the first time in 2018 I guess I'm saying this to all the VIPs over here. You guys are great And I hope that your years is going good and I will see you in a couple days for Sunday story time. Bye. Bye